As Americans get ready to hit the road to celebrate Thanksgiving, they will be paying a lot for gas. According to GasBuddy, average gasoline prices will be at the highest seasonal level ever. GasBuddy estimates that the national average will be $3.68 a gallon on Thanksgiving Day. That's nearly 30 cents higher than last year, over 20 cents higher than the previous record, a $3.44 set back in 2012. You might notice your heating oil bill rise this winter just last week. The average U.S. retail price for heating oil was 73% more than this time last year. And the U.S. Energy Information Administration is forecasting a 45% increase in the average household bill this winter. For more on what's putting pressure on the price of oil, we're joined by Stephen Short, Short Group Principal. Good to see you as always, sir. What is applying that pressure and how much the geopolitical events change all that? Uh, well, right now, the primary driver is a lack of refinery capacity. Here on the East Coast, here in Philadelphia, my hometown, uh, we had a large refinery that processed 330,000 barrels of crude oil each day, which considered made a tremendous amount of gasoline and diesel fuel. That refinery had a fire, it shut down, it is no more. So we've lacked the refinery capacity. Now refiners make their largest margin on gasoline. So we have fewer refineries and what refineries we have left are maximizing their gasoline production. So if you maximize your gasoline production out of the crude oil barrel, something has to give. And that given has been the diesel fuel market. So we're going into this winter with historically low inventories. In fact, 45 minutes up the Pennsylvania Turnpike uh, from my hometown, Allentown, they ran out of diesel on the Turnpike. They shut down the service station because they didn't have any diesel fuel. So we're going in, 70% of the homes that use heating oil as a winter fuel are located in the Northeast. And quite frankly, we don't have the refinery capacity. We don't have the supplies. And right now, we're now going into the peak demand season. So we're in a very precarious state. So as you mentioned, there are a number of things, the shortage of refineries, high prices, volatile markets. What does this mean then for the season as we have also extreme weather putting some of these refineries out as well? Yeah, absolutely. And, that, and that's the fear right now. Uh, we already had a big refinery that went down in uh, north, what is it, northwestern Ohio in Toledo uh, that went down uh, about a month ago, which sent Chicago uh, gasoline prices screaming higher. And this is the situation we're at. We, we don't have enough refineries. And what refineries we have this summer, we've been running them at 93, 94% of their capacity. So a refinery is an extremely complex piece of engineering. And when you run it longer and harder, your chances for a, 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 a mishap uh, increases greatly. So that's the risk we're going into right now. We're starting to come out of our fall maintenance season. So our refinery output will start to pick up. Our demand for crude oil will pick up in the month of ahead. And as we continue to run these refineries, and then you juxtapose that with some potential weather. And right now, the Midwest is getting some really nasty weather, uh, just increases uh, the opportunity to strain supplies even more. Stephen, it is freezing cold out east. I just want to throw that in. Uh, let's put all that aside and go overseas. We've got December 5th, the Russian price caps on oil get into place, the EU bans. And then we have this latest report of rockets. Not sure if they came from Russia, but the speculation is that they did, killing two in Poland near the Ukrainian border. What is the impact on all of that on the global energy markets? Uh, at this point, it certainly is an increase in volatility. No one really knows, to your point, with the uh, Polish missile attack today. Kremlin's denying it. Washington's denying it. Who knows uh, responsibility? So we certainly know that's going to increase volatility. As far as a supply situation is concerned, that to go back to the diesel fuel market, that is another constraint because whenever the Northeast diesel market ran out or was running low on fuel, they could rely on imports coming in from the North, Northern European uh, refinery epicenter, epicenter up there in Amsterdam, uh, Rotterdam, Antwerp. Uh, but obviously, with what's going on in Ukraine, the United States cannot rely on those imports. So, but we've known that now. We've known that since February. So a lot of that has gotten priced in. So yes, the geopolitics are, 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 are sky high right now uh, from uh, on the battlefield. But we would need to see 
a disruption in the flow of oil in Europe or coming to the United States for that really to be a prime driver. Really, the big driver now is uh, the economy. Demand is strong right now. But as OPEC just came out today, OPEC cut for the fifth time since April, they cut their global demand growth for oil. They are very concerned about an economic downturn taking hold in the first half of 2023. Uh, so everyone is kind of moving their chess pieces around the board right now. Those are expecting prices to fall further because of economic contraction versus those who are looking at the lack of supply right now and what that means in the near term. And it means higher prices in the near term going into winter. And Stephen, I know you mentioned diesel a few times, and we know that Bloomberg was reporting a potential Biden plan to stock up on diesel that might end up resulting in a price surge. What's your take on that? And what needs to be what needs to happen to really help diesel prices come down? Yeah, and, and that's that's been the, been the biggest mistake that the Biden administration has made is releasing barrels, crude oil in the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. You and I, we do not put crude oil in our cars. We do not put crude oil into our home furnaces. We, we put gasoline, we put diesel, we put heating oil uh, into those uh, vehicles. So releasing crude oil without the refinery capacity, uh, really, you're, you're not addressing the issue. And the issue is, to your point, uh, the dearth of diesel fuel. So there is a a reserve, a 2 million barrel reserve, uh, similar to what the SPR is, there was a reserve of 2 million barrels of heating oil, 2 million barrels of gasoline. Uh, so that I would expect to be released onto the market. Uh, you know, short of that, uh, we're not building, we haven't built a refinery here in the United States since the 1970s, certainly not going to start building them now. Uh, so the, really to address this issue, to get us through the winter, at least through the start of the winter, is to release some of those barrels onto the market. But then there and again, you're not addressing the issue. So yes, you'll have a short term fix, but you're not going to address the long term chasm between supply and demand. And therein lies the scenario for higher prices, because as you put more oil, government owned oil onto the market, you kill the incentive to produce more. So whatever produ production there is going towards diesel, you, you run the risk of retarding that going forward. And therefore, a lack of investment, a lack of production down the road just leads to uh, fewer barrels and therefore higher prices. Short-term fix, potential long-term problems. A big Indeed. thank you, Stephen Short. Thank you so much thank for you. joining us this afternoon. Cheers.